Dear Tom, the other day you talked about women who stay at home but don't do a goddamn thing. My mother is one of those people. She doesn't have a job, yet she has a full-time housekeeper. Guess how much she pays? Or should I say, my stepfather pays for this housekeeper. $40,000 a year. Our house isn't even that big. She refuses to do any laundry or clean the dishes because she's too old, in quotes. She's 50. And wants to, quote, just enjoy this last phase of her life. Yeah, we've had a full-time housekeeper since I was born, and I'm 23. Add it up. That's almost a million dollars spent on something she could have easily been doing herself. She spends hundreds of dollars a week on bottled water, when she could just drink from a Brita for free. Why do some women have no concept of money? We used to have a nice house. Not nice enough for her. She pressured my stepdad to spend over two million dollars to make it even nicer. <laughs> and she wonders why he just left her for a 23-year-old. <laughs> Says here, my dad left her for the same reasons. He told me that one of the moments he realized he had to divorce her was when they were standing in their kitchen on which he had just spent a million dollars remodeling because she wanted a nicer kitchen. When she started complaining that he didn't buy her a Valentine's Day card. He said, I might not buy you cards or flowers, but I do lots of other nice things for you. She replied with her hands on her hips, Oh, yeah? What have you ever done for me? He was shocked that she could have the nerve to say something like this while they're standing in a kitchen he just spent a million dollars remodeling for her. Why do women who come from nothing and then marry a rich guy all of a sudden get the nerve to do nothing but complain all the time? Where are all the grateful women, Tom? And it's signed, Paul. I had a relationship with somebody like that, a live-in relationship, with someone who never appreciated what I bring to the table. What do I bring to the table? Well, I don't give women money. I don't do that. But here's what I do. In those days when people lived with me, those days ended a while ago, when they lived with me, uh, they got to live in a fantastic Hollywood Hills home. They got to travel to some of the finer places in the world where anybody might want to go. Maui, Spain, Key West, Florida. Puerto Vallarta, Cabo. I mean, you name it. I traveled to lots of nice places. I get great seats for everything. Concerts, sporting events. You want to look at heavyweight boxing close up? I've sat in the sixth row of a heavyweight championship fight more than once. I mean, uh, World Series, Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, name the concert. Concerts people can't get tickets to, you to, whatever. Um, I routinely get these tickets. I routinely go to events like that. And the person I'm with gets to share that life with me. Restaurants. Not only do I eat at great restaurants, but at least when I'm in a city where the show is on, I get treated like a VIP. I can get a table on a moment's notice on a Saturday night when everyone is clamoring to get in at many restaurants. Eat the finest food, drink the finest wine. I've got a wine cellar with almost a thousand bottles of wine. I meet celebrities 
go to cool parties? I put it this way. When you are with me, you live a nice lifestyle. And uh, yet, the last person who lived in my house, whoever that was, was constantly complaining. She wanted another car. She wanted me to sell my house in the Hollywood Hills and buy a house in Malibu or Pacific Palisade. She didn't want to live in the Hollywood Hills. This is a house I've owned for 10 years, and I love as much as life itself. Oh, yes, she complained when uh, when I wanted to go to Spain. She wanted to go to Italy. She told me, you don't want to go to Spain. I've already been there. Uh, it's what I call the sense of entitlement. You know, many women get into relationships, and then they feel they are entitled. And I guess so we as a society make them feel they have the right to feel entitled because we award them vagina money when marriages don't work out and child support. And it's just assumed that men are going to buy the dinners, buy the drinks. Men are going to be the ones to get shot down asking them out on a date. Men are going to pay for the weekends away. Men are going to pay for the vacations. Men are going to pay the bulk of the household expenses like rent or a mortgage or groceries or... Uh, just about everything. And so after a while, women just do not appreciate what they are getting. I find it fascinating hearing the letter from Paul, and I understand where he's coming from. There she is. This is his mother, who's now lost two husbands for the same reason. Because she doesn't want to work. Because she gets them to spend money on uh, redoing the kitchen or whatever, and complains constantly despite the fact that they're getting all kinds of things. Then can't figure out why the guys keep leaving. The last person who lived with me got dumped three consecutive times, and I should have taken a cue from that. You know, I mean, she was young and attractive and funny and uh, in many ways fantastic. But why did three straight guys before me all dump her? And then I was the fourth in a row. Why? Uh, could it be that the whole relationship was based on what she could get? Could that be it? Could it be that she had a sense of entitlement? Not that uh, these were gifts you were giving her or th nice things you were doing for her. She was entitled. In fact, not only did she expect to get all of these things, but she was downright bored with them once she got them. Outrageous. Not her case. She didn't get a kitchen remodel. But um, I will give you an idea of something I did. I bought a car. Now, I kept it in my own name because I'm not stupid. But I bought a car. And it was a different kind of a car that we could use for other purposes. It was a small SUV. She said she wanted an SUV. So I bought the SUV. I went to uh, Consumer Reports, and I found the most reliable SUV, and it happened to be a Toyota RAV4. And she said how happy she was to be getting it. But it wasn't long before she said, I want to trade this in for a Mercedes or BMW or a Land Rover. But uh, come on. It's a RAV4. Uh, you got to be kidding me. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> And uh, it was like that all the time. And by the way, I maintained ownership of the car, despite many uh, many attempts by her to uh, pry it away from me and to get me to put her name on it. Uh, I didn't do that. During the course of the relationship, I did not do that. But I understand what Paul is talking about with his mother, because I've been with women like this who just expect to get and get and get. And there's nothing more rewarding, like uh, Paul's uh, Paul's uh, father who left for a 23-year-old than his stepfather who left for another 23-year-old. There's nothing more rewarding than getting your ass out of a situation like that. Whether you get into a new one with a 23-year-old or whether you just uh, spend your time alone, there's nothing more rewarding than getting rid of someone who doesn't appreciate what you bring to the table, doesn't appreciate what you bring to the party. Just expects that you're going to work, make money, come home, and spend it on them. That's like a given. No, there's no such thing as a gift. There's no such thing as a surprise in a life like that. Because it's expected.
you know, you buy flowers for them. It's expected. You get them a card. It's expected. Uh, it's impossible to surprise or, um, uh, you know, just uh, uh, it's, it's hard to do anything for them. Uh, and no matter what you do, it, it's like it's just like that attitude. What have what, what have you ever done for me? I'm all tongue tied about it, which I rarely get on the air. But uh, I've been through this. I've been with people that I've done things for. And by the way, just the ability to live in my world, travel where I travel, meet the people I meet, eat the food, drink the wine, have the experiences I get to have. You get to have those with me. All taken for granted. I'm much happier being a free agent. And if I want to go on a date with a woman, I say, hey. I got free tickets to this concert. Would you like to go? And I'm sitting in the front row of a concert. Or, uh, hey, how about a Laker game? And I've got tickets on the floor at the Laker game, which I got from a buddy or I got from a PR person or something. You know, when you do this on a free agent basis, women are very appreciative. They can't believe how wonderful it is. So you, you got to wonder. You got to wonder about women who just have the sense of entitlement, women who are not grateful, do not appreciate what you do, how hard you work, what you bring home. And I know many of our listeners are very hard workers. You work hard. You try to bring cash home. And many of you just try, try, try to make those broads happy. Sometimes it seems like no matter what you do, you can't make them happy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Oh, here to Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah, hey, I need your help, man. I know everyone asks this question, but I need your help, seriously. All right, I'll give you a bit of my background first. Um, I was born, actually, and raised abroad in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, where I'm a successful model, slash actor, musician. I've been in the United States for about one year and six months right now. I mean, actually based out here. So, I mean, I've dated many women, models, uh, actresses abroad, and they are women. The women in the States are not women. I've been dating this model, which I met at a party here in Los Angeles, and the minute I date her, the first thing she comes out of her mouth is, uh, if you want to date me, you got to pay for my meals, you pay for all my expenses, because if you don't, some other dude will. So... That was just a comment that came out of her mouth. So out of the generosity of my heart, because I like this chick, I started doing that. Now, the more I do that, the more she expects. And she doesn't take one thing that I do to heart. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. She's just, it's unbelievable. I buy her things. If she I buy, okay, exactly. Why do you, wait, wait, stop. Why do you buy her things? I came from a good moral family of high ethics and morals. This has nothing to do with ethics or morals. I mean, what it means is you believe in paying for vagina. No, actually, I don't. I've never. I, I, I'm a big player. Trust me, I'm a big player. Well, then, uh, why do you need to buy her things? What does high morals have to do with buying things for somebody no, you're dating? I like to give. It makes me pa feel good. Pal, give to a charity. That's true. Okay, how about not things? Just dinners. I, I buy her dinners, you know, because I can afford it. I really uh, can the afford it. Pal, you know, here's the deal. I hate that phrase, I can afford it. Every penny you spend that you say you could afford could have been put away, invested in your future. Invested in stocks, real estate, mutual funds, fixed income instruments. Uh, you, you cannot afford it. You're 24 years old. Are you a billionaire? No, sir. Are you a millionaire? Uh, close, but no, no, no I'm not. No, then you can't afford it. Okay. But I'm, I'm lonely. I like, I feel good about it. Pal, I mean, if you're such a player, there were plenty of other women that you were seeing that you didn't have to spend this kind of money on. That's true. That's true. I've never spent this much money on a chick. And believe it or not, the chicks that I used to date, they used to pay for me sometimes and make me feel good. And I would love to do things for them and back. But this chick, man, she pays for nothing. Like, well, absolutely nothing. So why don't you just dump her? I, I, I've never dumped a chick like that. I mean, I tell her that we're friends and then she threatens me that she's going to do this. And I don't know. Oh, and she threatens you, too. That's great. So you buy her things and she threatens you. Boy, you are pussy whipped. 
She's not even that good in bed, dude. <laughs> well, but well, then why do you tolerate this stuff? Uh, I, I guess she's everything that I'm not. Okay, I never went to school. You know, I'm successful in a different area, but she's graduated from USC and she's puts me down she all has, the time and she just pushes me she's down. She's a me bitch. Feel, she's a bitch. Why do you tolerate it? I have no idea. Well, then stop doing it. Okay. I mean, are you that desperate? No, actually, I'm not. I'm very soft hearted. Then why do desperate. you tolerate this? I don't know. You want to give money? Give money to a charity. Find a charity you care about and support them. All right. Why do you have to give your money to unfeeling, cold hearted bitches? That makes you feel good? No, actually, it doesn't, and I've, I've been fighting for the last two weeks about it, and I, I actually listened to your show. I started listening to your show about a year ago, and then it, it got the better of me, and I i don't know. I felt all weird inside listening to it, the truth, and I just turned you on right now, and it's something I'm going through. I'm like, God damn it, Tom. I mean, sorry, sorry. You're always right. So what are you doing about it? You know what? I'm, I'm, I we pretty much broke up last night, but then she calls me this morning saying she misses me and she's sorry. Oh, and I'm, please. I'm the kind of person that... That's what abusive, to... that's what abusive husbands do. Yeah, I mean... They treat you like crap and then the next day, oh, honey, I miss you. Here's some flowers. I miss you. Yeah, that's true. But then, see, because I've, I've come from such a high moral ethic background, my parents, like, always taught what me... What does this have to do with morals and ethics? Well, someone apologizes, you know, since she sounds sincere, then, you know, you forgive him. No, but she, the thing is, she never, she behaves like this all the time. That's true, and you always say you can't change them, but I, I just You feel, can't change yeah. them. You can't no. change anyone. I agree. So stop trying. But I, I change anyone. I mean, I've met some people that's changed around, their whole life changed around through certain, you know, aspects of the They life don't change saying. because of you or because of dating you. That's true. They change if they feel like changing. But That's you true. telling people to change does not change them. That's true. So stop trying. Okay. Hang on. Right. Scott, what did you want to say to Steve? Hello, Tom. Hello, Steve. I'm Scott, I'm sorry. Hey, no worries. Hey, uh, your first clue, buddy, should have been when she starts making demands to you on the first date. Any woman who says anything like that, that to me is hitting the road, pal. I mean, come on, grow yourself some nads. Do you yep. think that low of yourself? Pardon me? Do you think that low of yourself that you can't get anybody else that, that demands stuff from you on a first date? Why don't you find somebody that, that's willing to pay for their own dinner or maybe even get this concept, make you dinner? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I come am. on, bro. Get By the that. way, let me let me throw in, and uh, that's a good point, Scott. Uh, if if you come from such a background of moral upbringing and and, and old school, old fashioned uh, ethics, uh, <laughs> why the hell do you tolerate this crap from women? In, in, in families like that that are old school. The man is the boss. I, I guess it's not really an old school, but I was just taught that you know, do good and good should be given unto you. So I'm always. But, but obviously, that's wrong, isn't it? And, and do good for someone who appreciates it, bro. This chick doesn't appreciate you. She told you that the first day. If you don't buy it for me, some other sucker will. And that's what you're being, a sucker. Yeah, that's true. All right, guys, good luck. All Thank right, you, thanks. Scott. Let me get June on here. Let's get a female perspective. June, what did you want to say to Steve? Hey, uh, well, he, he just contradicted oh, it's himself. He was like, uh, I'm a player. And then he's like, I'm from a high moral family. You know? Well, which is it? Did they teach you to play? Like, what does no, that mean? Well, actually, no, actually, I left home when I was 15, so my moral ethic standards have been installed in me since I was, until the age of 15. I mean, I come, I'm, I'm out in the entertainment world, dude. I mean, I, I get a lot of chicks, but... Yeah, but then, if you're a player, then why are you paying for well, all your crap? I've been, I've, I've, I've been doing that for, like, seven years, and for me, sometimes it gets kind of old. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you, you've, I've hurt a lot of people. I've been through some terrible experiences. So sometimes I'm like, okay, I gotta try to clean up my act. And, so by uh, paying for all of her crap, you're, uh, you're paying for all your mistakes in the past? Probably. That's yeah. stupid. Don't, yeah. yeah, she doesn't deserve it. I mean, actually, find somebody that actually deserves it. And yeah, you gotta feel stupid if the person's just, you know, a freaking sponge. Just taking all your funds, you know, for nothing. If, and she's not appreciative, so what's, what's the point? Yeah, that's true. You know, all chicks over here like this. 
What's that? Uh, the majority of the chicks over in the United States like this. You just told us the other chicks you were with weren't like this, Steve. I mean, come on. I'm, I'm saying all the chicks in the United States. If all the chicks were like this, why would the chicks you've dated in the past not be like this? Oh, I dated European chicks. European, Asian. Well, I, we, we recommend on this program that you avoid American women like the play. Oh, tell me about it, dude. Fart. Gold diggers. All of them. <laughs> Anyway, there, there might be one diamond in the rough, but yeah, yeah, you're better off without them. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Correct. <laughs> Correct. All right, guys. Thanks. All right. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right, Steve June. Thank you very much for the calls. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Can you believe that? Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. All right, man. It's good to talk to you. I know. All right. Tell me about it, Pop. Let me give you the rundown here. I uh, work two jobs right now. I'm a full-time student, and I'm 23. Uh, I got a lot going for me, you know, got a lot of charisma and a lot of headstrong stuff moving forward. And I got this girlfriend of mine. She's 26, and she just sucks the life out of me. Well, it, strike one. Why do you have a girlfriend at 23? Because I followed the wrong rules, you know. I just thought that it was the smart thing to do, stay what? out of trouble and stuff. Well, stay out of trouble? Yeah. The only chance you have to get in trouble is when you're 23. Come on, what are you doing? Well, just getting drunk and having fun with my friends, next thing you know, you're hooking up with fat chicks. I mean, you can't have that happen all the time. So there's no love involved here. You are, uh, instead of buying uh, good copies on the newsstand, you decided to subscribe to one particular magazine. Yeah, exactly. And now I want to start reading the market again and, and dabbling and playing. You so know, why don't uh, you? Well, that's the thing, Tom. My heart says one thing, and the other two parts of my body say another. My brain and the lower parts, you know, they're all ready for game time. Yeah, but you're you paying know. for it. Uh, you know what? Hire a hooker. <laughs> yeah. yeah if you, look, if you're going to pay for it, hire a professional. I mean, my God, among call girls, there are more nines and tens than you'll find anywhere else. Well, I thought about that. You know, and two years ago when I got together with her, I was kind of taking it bit by the love bug, thought it was the thing to do, and, uh, you know, I thought I was going to have kids and all that, but... Right, but you, you know, know that's not true now, and so now it's start, time to start changing it up. Well, yeah, since listening to you, I realize how some of these women, you know, just, I mean, it's great the first three or five years or whatever, but then the next thing you know, they start having an affair on you, or they want half of your house or your business. I mean, who wants to lose their, you know, their bottom line? Like, right. You know? That's right. That's right. So what do you suggest to do? You know, you know what I suggest to do. You don't want to. You don't want to hear it. Well, I'd like to hear it from you. Get out. Okay. So what do I do to get out? I mean, I'm not living with her or anything. So tell her tonight. It's over. All right. And then just go out with my friends and get drunk and have fun. Right. And meet other chicks and bang around. <laughs> I like banging around, Tom. <laughs> well, believe me, we all like it. As guys, we all like it. That's what we do best. And, and you know what? You're going to be so much happier just the way I've been telling you for the past couple of years that I've been happy living alone. Yes, and it sounds like it because you have similar tastes to what I have. You know, it's just nice to like the finer things in life and not have somebody bitching in the background about it, you know? Right. By the way, as I said at the beginning of this hour, women appreciate you and what you bring to the table a lot more when they can't count on getting it. Right. Which right. means... <laughs> yeah, they appreciate you much more when you date one today and another one tomorrow and another one the day after. Right, right, absolutely. Tom. Let me tell absolutely. you something. Uh, for example, I have, uh, just to give you an example, in the summertime in L.A., everybody wants to spend a night at the Hollywood Bowl. Everybody wants to do that. Absolutely. I have a box at the Hollywood Bowl, a box. And when I had a girlfriend, she hated Oh, we have to go again? It's Wednesday? We have to go to the mall? We just went last Wednesday. Uh, meanwhile, uh, <laughs> when I have lived alone, like I do now, mm -hmm. th there's only eight shows at the bowl, and uh, there's more than eight women who, who descend upon me in the summertime. Please, please take me. Please, please, please. That would just love to go. We have a similar thing down here in Orange County, um, and it's at the Verizon Amphitheater, and it's like the summer concert series. Right. You know? And I, I actually took her there for uh, Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, and uh, 
you know, she didn't really appreciate it, not nearly as much as I did. If I probably would have gone on my own, you know. Well, I mean, but, but that's what I'm telling it. you. They, when, when they feel like they got you under their thumb, when they call you boyfriend or whatever, live in, then they just expect this stuff. No, I feel like I'm sucked in and I can't get out. You know, it's crazy. Uh, you can, we can make one phone call right now. We can end it right here. <laughs> that's true, Tom. That's we, true. we can make the call right now. And believe me, she'll never talk to you again when I'm done with her. Well, I definitely believe that. You know, you're a lot more uh, truthful than I am. Well, but, well why do you need to lie? Well, Dan, what do you have to lose by telling the truth? Nothing. So why not just tell her? Tell her she's draining you. Tell her she doesn't appreciate uh, what you bring to the party. And tell her as a result, it's over and that's it. I agree, Tom. She doesn't live with you. You. This is This is not hard to do. Absolutely, Tom. You're right. Hey, Tom, take me out Travis style, would you? Okay, here you go. All right. Jazz on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. I love your show. I've been listening for so many years. Thank you. Okay, and I just want to say to all those suckers out there who have been taken by their girlfriends because they tell them that they love them so much, and I, I bet um, the last time they got some good delay show, it's probably been years or months or weeks even, um, and what I do for a living is I'm a hooker, and I love my job. I love it. I love my job, and I love making money, and I love sex, but I love it so much more when I'm getting paid for it. Uh-huh. And um, I'm very grateful and thankful to all the men who give me their money, and I show them how grateful I am by how I treat them. It's so a quid pro quo, so you give the guys what they paid for. Yeah, definitely. I'm I'm not in a relationship, and I just choose not to be just because it's just too much hassle. But I, I own multiple properties. I have a business, and I'm 26, and I've been doing this since I was uh, 19. So you and could I, retire at 30 and be done with it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm, I go on vacations. I'm actually on my way to the mall right now to go shopping and spend some of that money. And I love my job. And these guys need to just realize that these girls, there's no difference between me and these girls, except for these guys actually get what they're what they're paying for. Plus, they, you go you plus you go away when we're done. Yes, I'm not a headache. I don't ask questions. I don't care. All I care about is just making my money and and you know and making sure that that the uh, customer is having a good time because I do have a very good return customer plan. You know, like they like they love me. Do these guys get discounts if they're regulars? Oh, of course, of course, uh -huh. you know, of course, of course they do. Mm -hmm. Of course they do. And, the, and these guys need to just wake up. And California girls, I mean, girls are horrible everywhere in the world, but we're bad out here. We are really bad. And to that guy who called earlier who's a model and he's a player, no, he's not a player. He's getting hustled. Of course he is. He is getting hustled by a girl who is a player, and that's what she's doing. And she told him right from, right from the get, hey, I'm going to hustle you, so know this. These guys need to just realize that if they want to spend their money, they're going to get more if they go to a strip club or something like that. They're I don't. By, get... by the way, I don't agree on strip clubs. When guys tell me about strip clubs, I always recommend hookers because I always say that the girls at strip clubs are hookers who don't put out. Exactly, exactly. But at least they're going to grind on you, except for uh, guys go to they go. See, I don't go out to clubs. I don't do anything like that. I'm such a homebody. Whenever I whenever I go out, you know, I get dressed up and I go to work. And that's what I do. Uh huh. And I'm because I'm not going to go out and spend my money on some other, I don't know, nonsense. You know, aside from my shopping addiction, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to support my uh, Tiffany habit, so. Oh, I she has to do what she has to do. Yes, I understand. But you see, what I like about this conversation, much as some people may have a problem with prostitution, is that you're up front. You are up front about who you are, what you do, yes. what you expect. The deal is understood going in. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, no surprises at all. I at tell all. I tell guys all the time: if you're gonna spend that much money on a chick, hire a pro. Exactly, and you know what I. I really get off on this when guys telling me, "Hey, I've, I haven't felt this way in so long," or when it's just kind of like I'm I'm a therapist as well, you know. <laughs> well, I'm in a, a sense, therapist as well. <laughs> a therapist without a degree, yes, indeed. Yeah. Of course, I'm a professor, so there you go. 
<laughs> well, all right. Well, Jazz, thank you so much for uh, stating yeah, that case because it's a case I've stated many times to people. Prostitution's illegal, boys, but if you're going to spend that much money, yeah, might as well hire somebody who gives you what you paid for and, and you goes are away. The best, and Tom, you are you are the best. You are the best. And if I ever bump into you, and I and I've been trying to run into you, don't worry. You don't have to support my uh, Tiffany hat. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Well, you know where I am, dear. I, I work the Hollywood area. I'm actually on my way out there right now. There we go. All right. I'll see you later. All right. See you later. one 800 800 tom He is our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Hey, um, I work with two girls. I do a bunch of charity golf uh, tournaments and stuff. And the one girl that we have that goes with us, there's also a sales rep who uh, takes her also. And he buys her drinks and everything and raffle cards and all that stuff. And she looks at me like, why aren't you doing the same thing for me? It's like, why? Why should I? And another uh, chick that I know will go out someplace, and she just gets up and walks away from the table expecting somebody else to pick up the check. And we were out at Medieval Times one time, and I showed her some glass, and she thought I bought her a drink and just walks off with it. So she realized it was empty. She said, oh, I, thought, I thought you bought me a drink. I said, I ain't buying you a drink if you ain't putting out. And I don't think my wife would be too jazzed with that. So I'm not buying you a drink. <laughs> I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. They, these two, they go to clubs and stuff, and they'll hit the guys up for drinks and everything. And they, they know that they're not going to put out or nothing. Well, because we have pathetic guys like that model from Thailand who called in earlier. Oh, what a pussy. Oh, I mean, they, because they, because we may say no to these women, but guys like that say yes and hand them their cash. I, I think you should have to have a license to have a balls. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't think they should just be given to you. I think you should earn them. Oh, I, think, uh, I think some of these guys should just donate their balls to somebody who could use some. Oh, my mom was totally for equal rights and everything, but she's like, if you want equal rights, don't expect a guy to open the door for you. Don't expect him to pull out your chair. You do that your own. It's absolutely right. You know, I, I really appreciate everything you say, Tom. Jason, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Elathio? Hey, what's up, Tom? Uh, not much. What's going on? Hey, I just want to weigh in on the topic real quick. Um, actually, I'm a 24-year-old right now. That just, I've graduated from college, so I think I'm pretty set, you know, and I'm going back for my master's. Right. But um, like I was saying, the screener, uh, I had a girl. I was, dating, I was dating this girl a few months ago. She's 20. And... Uh, you know, I, I, you know, like I, I put myself through school, so I don't have that. I didn't have that much money back then. So, like, you know, I, I would take her out. I'll take her to dinner, buy what I can, we'll rent a movie. And one time we had an argument, and she had the nerve to tell me, "Oh, you don't do anything for me." And I was like, "What?" I was like, "What? What? What?" Do you, she like, "What else besides you buy me dinner? What else do you do for me?" And I told her, and that that shocked me, you know, because. I think you know, she, this was a nice girl, like, never really had many boyfriends. She had, like, one boyfriend. So I was like, what do you mean? I, what, what more do you want? You know, I give you what I can. And she's like, well, you don't do anything for me. Uh, she started, like, going off on me. So you know what? I finally had enough of it. And I told her, you know what? Find somebody who can treat you better. She said, Apparently, I can't do it. And after that, she, after I, after she heard that, she was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. And I was like, oh, now you're changing your tone of voice. No, no, I don't give I don't give them a second chance. And when somebody complains uh -huh. that I don't do enough for them, or that they want things that I won't get them, or whatever, that's it, uh -huh. done. Yeah, that's what I told her. I was like, you know what? And her friends are trying to tell me, oh, give her another chance. I was like, no, she told me straight to my face, like I don't do anything for her. Apparently, what I gave her was not enough. You know, I was like, I didn't have a great job because I was still going to school. You know, now that I'm done with school, I have a better paying job. And now she's like, oh, you want to hang out? You want to hang out? I'm like, no. It's like, you screwed that up already. I'm not going to give you another chance. Mm -hmm. But I always hear, like, her friends crying and calling me. And every time you say that, I think about two. <laughs> I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is the guy that, that turned. And I told I'm her, like, the one who tells you, be, a, be an a-hole. That's what you got to be. Yeah, and I told her, I was like, like, when she would hear me listen to you, and she would hate it. She's like, I was like, this is the guy who turned me on to the right path. And she's like, is this the guy that told you to be an a-hole? And I was like, exactly. 
She's like, well, I don't like them. I'm like, that's, that's why I used to listen to her, listen to when she was in the car. <laughs> and you know what? I, I called you before a few years ago. I've been listening since 2006. I mean, 2001, actually. And I was going to let you know that my teacher turned me on to you. One of my political science teachers in a college class. Yes. He turned me on to He He mentioned Tom Leggett. He's like, I'm a Tom Leggett listener. And I, I saw the reaction out of class. The girls were like, oh, great. And <laughs> I, I, I had to look over to the girl next to me, and I told her, who's Tom Like is? And she's like, listen to 97.1 after three, and you'll find out. <laughs> I love that. Lamont on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Great. Hey, I got. I want to, first of all, I want to tell you something about about my perception of you when uh, when I first saw you. I saw you on TV. I think it was like an entertainment, uh, you know, uh, VH1 or something like that. And, uh, you know, I've been listening to you for, for probably about eight months now. And uh, one reference that you always seem to make when it comes to women wanting to get in your Cheerios is that uh, you, you, you point out uh, how unattractive you are some, at some points. And I want to tell you that you're absolutely uh, wrong about that. No, I'm not gay or anything, but my perception has usually been a very, a very big reality. And I'm telling you, man, you're, number one, you're really just not that unattractive. Well, here's the thing. I just try to take that weapon out of their hands when they call up and they try to use that, yeah. which has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah, I know. And, and it, and it kind of railroads them when you, uh, when you automatically say, oh, yeah, you know, um, I'm unattractive. So right back at you. What's your next point? Uh, so anyways, good job on that. I wanted to tell you also about uh, this. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad you told me all that stuff, and I appreciate it, Lamont. But unfortunately, we've run out of time now for this hour. I thank you for the call at our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.